G'day there everyone. Just a really quick update because my hand blocked out the meter in the last video. There's also something else I wanted to talk about. The last video was getting a bit long anyway, so I thought I'd go with two videos rather than editing. Um, so we have here my ladies jar. This capacitor meter is not hooked up at the moment. Um, sorry, my variable capacitor. It's hooked up to this capacitor meter. Um, if you're in good definition or full screen, you should see 619.6 picofarads on there. Now, if I, you see, I've got my little lugs welded, in, um, I don't know what you call that, plastic melted in. So that as I turn this very slowly through my 720 degrees of adjustment range, bear in mind my hand is throwing that out a bit, if I have to take my hands off to get a steady reading. But, I think if you're watching that meter go down, you'll agree that I can get some very small adjustments. Let's see, I've got 479.2, 468.1, I can do a smaller movement than that. There we go. 468.4, 4. as you can see, we can turn down, keep turning. Watch out, they don't get tangled. And the capacitance progressively gets smaller and smaller until the lugs all line up again at the full range of the adjustment. And I've pulled it apart and deconstructed it again since last video. So I've got it together in a slightly different order and the smallest it's going at the moment is about 50, 40 to 50 picofarads. So I don't have the 20 I did before. Now Something else I wanted to show you guys and talk about, discuss, a bit of a question I have. We're going to move back over here to the voltage testing area. Now really to do this test properly you need high voltage. The best I've got at the moment right now is a 7.3 volt, 9 volt battery. Now I have here, I'll just take these clamps off for a second and show you what I've got. It's just two cups with foil. But I've made a slight difference. I've got foil on the outside of that cup. I hope you can see. And I have foil on the inside of this cup. And I have a clear cup with no foil in between. Now this is an attempt to make a deconstructible Leyden's jar. And you'll read about a really cool thing on the Wikipedia site. Where I believe it was Franklin discovered that you could charge a Leyden's jar much like this with high voltage and then while it's charged with high voltage disconstruct it into three separate parts handle all of the parts even earth them out maybe I'm not sure and then put it back together again and with your high voltage get a spark now I've tried it with a 9 volt battery and my 9 volt battery is flat, I'm getting, if we look at that meter now, make that now, 7.4 volts in my 9 volt battery. So it's not really working. My discharge time is too fast. That 700 volts just disappears way too quickly. So the capacitor is now charged to 7.4 volts. I'll disconnect the battery. As you can see, I've run way less than a volt, or volt already. I can't deconstruct and reconstruct my Leyden's jar, my little mini deconstructable Leyden's jar, in the time that it takes for that capacitor to fully discharge. It's, I just don't have enough time to do it. So if any of you out there have something with hundreds or thousands of volts that you could charge one of these things up with and find out for me just how much they can take and see if the deconstructable one will work and if you can draw a spark I don't think you'll get everything that you had it charged up with when you had it before it got deconstructed but if you could pull one apart like that and handle all the parts it proves that the electricity is stored on or in the dielectric now that kind of, to me, defies the laws of physics a little. How is that working? Is it stored inside the plastic? Are two, 
Is electricity and plastic occupying the same point in space and time? Or is it stored really thinly over the outside? Um, one thing that's interesting and definitely noteworthy is the thinner your dielectric, the greater the pictofarads for the amount of surface area of your plates. The closer you can get those plates together, the more power you can store in there. So again, that just doesn't seem to make sense to me. The smaller the space, the more you can put in it. What's going on here? There's some really important questions about science and physics that are not explained that you can demonstrate with these Leyden's jars, but we can't really explain. So if anyone would like to have a go at that or suggest anything that might help me have another go at that, please let me know. And thank you very much for watching.